This is a $50 bill in the US, a grant, half a Benji, big deal, right? But it can buy you this, one of the cheapest 3000 megahertz, 16 gig kits of DDR4 memory on the market. But should you buy it? Let's talk. This video is brought to you by Ridge Wallet, a sleek, light, and compact solution for buggy, unorganized messes. Fellas, be honest, does your wallet look anything like this right here? Ridge Wallet hold up to 12 cards plus room for cash. You can choose between over 30 styles and enjoy a durable build backed by a lifetime warranty and peace of mind thanks to RFID blocking tech baked in. My favorite designs are these two right here, the carbon fiber model and the forged carbon model. This one's especially cool. And you can find both via the link below. Just visit ridge.com forward slash GS and use code GS for 10% off with free worldwide shipping and return. That's ridge.com forward slash GS and use code GS. So I'd like you to meet these, uh, oh, Oloy, Oloy, oh, I think I'm gonna go with Oloy, Warhawk modules. And a strange name aside, I've no doubt these looks will be extremely polarizing. But let's talk about Oloi itself. Where does it come from? Well, the brand is actually owned by Chunwell, which is a Chinese manufacturer of memory. Their emphasis is volatile memory, which is typically SD RAM, more specifically, uh, though they do hold a two and a half inch SSD listing on their Alibaba vendor page. Oloi has traditionally been marketed as an affordable alternative to blinged out DDR4 in the Western hemisphere. And with a price tag of roughly 50 US dollars, that makes this particular kit one of the cheapest on the market with these specifications. I mean, 3000 megahertz is around the bare minimum frequency I'd recommend for any modern AMD CPU up to maybe Zen 2, and I'd push for clocks closer to 4000 megahertz for Zen 3 for separate reasons we'll discuss in a separate video. But at 3000 megahertz and with a cache latency of uh, 16 cycles, I'd say this is pretty decent for any mid to low spec AMD or Intel build in the DDR4 era. Additional timings are 18, 18, 36, which is fairly typical of 3000 megahertz and 3200 megahertz kits in this price range. And by the way, if you're wondering about construction, these are actually surprisingly well built. I'm, I was kind of shocked. I expected a plastic housing to surround the PCB, but instead we were greeted by a moderately thick metal construction comprised of two solid pieces joined at the top by a plastic light diffuser. The lights underneath are fairly bright when powered and the diffusing quality is actually much better than I expected, which I suppose is quickly becoming the narrative for these modules, better than I expected. I expected to see, uh, you know, just very bright blotches of light and really nothing in between, but the diffusing properties here are actually working fairly well. Ole Warhawks are also compatible with a plethora of RGB software suites, including Asus Aura, Gigabyte RGB Fusion, ASRock Polychrome, and MSI Mystic Light, so you should be able to sync them up without a hitch, though the default lighting effect is the one you're seeing here. And Godspeed when it comes to dealing with any of those RGB software suites. Holy crap. But now let's talk performance. In a 16 gig dual channel configuration paired with a Ryzen 5 3600X and Asus B550 Prime, I was able to enable XMP without a hitch, right? 3000 megahertz CL16, piece of cake. Even through an IDA64 stress test, no errors and memory latency in IDA64's memory benchmark came out to 76 nanoseconds, but more on that later. Next, I wanted to see how far I could push these modules, so I overclocked them beyond factory specs. Now this can easily be done in your motherboard's BIOS. I don't mean for this to be a tutorial, but I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. Uh, it essentially involves changing this multiplier here to something higher than in this case 30. So it's gonna be the multiplier uh, times the base clock of typically 100 megahertz, so it would be 3000 megahertz. Change it to 32, that equals 3200 megahertz. And I've seen many 3200 megahertz CL16 kits on the market again, so I figured this would be a good starting point. So with this multiplier now at 32 and timings unchanged, I rebooted, reran the test, and the overclock seems to have stuck. Memory latency dropped by around 5% as a result, and we can actually confirm the frequency bump in something like CPU-Z, so we're not just being fooled by what our BIOS is telling us. Our IDA64 stress test again held up just fine, so we could call this relatively stable, though long-term testing is, is true validation since these numbers could slowly degrade over time, just like how if you're overclocking a CPU over time, you might need to you know, push a few extra millivolts uh, toward the CPU in order to keep it, you know, holding that overclock, whatever it happens to be. Uh, all tech will degrade slowly over time. You might need to push more voltage over time. That could of course mean that things run a bit hotter over time as well. But uh, in the immediate, at least in our testing, 
overclock stuck. But unfortunately, this is as far as the overclocking went for this oil locative RAM. I tried stretching for a cast latency of 15 cycles, but the modules refused to hold it, and any manual tweaking of timings resulted in an infinite boot. That's an indication that not, you know, what you're doing is not working. Uh, so that's not the outcome I was hoping for, but I suppose it isn't really unexpected. I mean, manufacturers will often rate modules slightly under maximum spec to leave a bit of room for variance between chips. Sort of like how monitor manufacturers aim for refresh rates slightly under what many of them will actually clock to. There's just too much variance in sampling. So some panels may reach 75 hertz over a base 60, but others may only reach 70. So you can't just say that all of those monitors will, will reach 75 hertz. And that's why there's the decision in place to keep a safe refresh rate number advertised on the box at say 60 and so on. You could use this analogy for CPUs, GPUs, right? Binning is not just limited to central processors. And that's why there's almost always a bit of wiggle room. But being able to reach 3200 megahertz, CL16, 18, 18, 36, or 38 timings is pretty darn good for a $50 kit of RAM from a company most of you probably haven't bothered messing with. And if you're wondering how these modules stack up against a better suited 3600 megahertz kit from a name brand like Corsair, let's say, uh, here are the deltas. So 3600 megahertz, 3.6 gigahertz, CL18, and the same dual channel config in the same platform gets you around 69 nanoseconds worth of latency in this benchmark when it's all said and done. And this is just one of many ways to verify memory potential again. This will somewhat reflect a performance bump, uh, especially in, again, a Ryzen platform. Uh, not as much in the case of Intel, but still worth noting, this is why people are willing to pay more for faster kits of RAM. Said latency will extend into CPU synthetics, games, and even creation-focused workloads, particularly, again, in Ryzen's case, and that's because the Infinity Fabric latencies there are tied to these values. And to show you the opposite side of the spectrum, I also threw in a team group kit with higher latencies and timings. Now, every kit of RAM will have its purpose. Obviously, the purpose of this kit is not for gaming, hence the timings and the frequency here. Uh, but this is a T-Create pair running at 2666 megahertz CL19. The memory latency incurred here is what we'd expect, and this would result in noticeable performance loss in a Zen 2 system. So all in, I'd say Oloy makes a pretty decent kit of RAM here. I mean, that's something that... Uh, Many of us, I suppose, shouldn't be surprised by, at least based on what they're advertising on the box, but I feel like, you know, people see a, a, a company by the name of Oloy, or Oloy, they just get a little frantic and they think that the advertised speeds aren't actually indicative of what you'll see in the real world. Uh, but it turns out, at least in the case of this kit here, which I bought out of pocket, this was not sent to me, or, you know, it was not like a cherry-picked sample, so to speak. Turns out, these figures are exactly that. 3000 megahertz CL16, piece of cake with XMP. Want to do a bit of manual overclocking, you should have a bit of headroom. Again, every kit of RAM will be slightly different, but uh, if I was on a tight budget and needed something fast and dependable for around 50 bucks, I wouldn't have a problem at all buying this kit from Oloy. In fact, I'm gonna build a system using this kit of RAM and uh, I'm gonna brag about the money I save. I mean, sure, looks can be polarizing, especially with these awkward kind of ish gold shiny accents, uh, but at the end of the day, the result is the same. Great bang for your buck. You can find it linked below along with the team group and Corsair kits shown here as well. Let me know in the comments what you think of cheaper kits of RAM like these and be sure to consider subscribing if you haven't already. My name is Greg, thanks for learning with me.